My name is Emily, and I have been married for five years, and I am a stay-at-home mom. I have always had a hard time having children. When we got married, my husband Jackson and I talked a lot, and we almost called off the marriage once. Jackson still wanted to marry me, and as a result, we we have come to this point. I have been seeing an obstetrician regularly, but so far, no problems have come up. Then one day, I received a text from Jackson, and I couldn't believe my eyes. This isn't something I should do over text, but I need to tell you something important. What's wrong? It's hard to tell you. Huh? What is it? If you don't tell me, I'm going to struggle to finish my evening work. The truth is, I was thinking about divorce. Divorce? Who and who? You and me. Who else? This is definitely a conversation that shouldn't be over text. But why? Do we have any issues? Well, is it because I can't have children? There's that, but also, I already made one. Made what? A baby. Huh? With who? Someone you don't know. There was a woman I was talking to, and now she is pregnant, and told me I need to take responsibility. So you are telling me you cheated on me, and now you have to take responsibility? Basically, yes. There's more to it, though. Like what? My mother said she wants a grandchild, and this woman was someone that my mother introduced me to. Excuse me? I was in the position where I had to do what I was told. So that's what happened. That's what happened? Of course, I'll pay alimony, and you can still live with me until you find a new place to stay. Hold on, wait a minute. I can't keep up with you because the story is developing so quickly. Can you give me some time to think, to sort things out? Of course, but please don't say you won't divorce me. It will be a waste of time and money to go to divorce mediation, wouldn't it? Does that mean we're definitely getting a divorce? I guess so. Can you give me a couple of days first? Sure. Are you coming home? I don't think I will. I feel bad for the other woman, so I'm going back to her place for now until everything is settled. I see. Will I get to meet her? You want to meet her? It's an important time for her, and I can't let her see you. If you need to talk to her, you can go through me. Okay. I'll talk to you later. The sudden text left me speechless. Yesterday, or even until this morning, I thought we were having a normal conversation, a normal couple. But in fact, it was all a lie. I was stunned that we had actually broken up a long time ago, and I decided to finish work that day anyway and go home to think things over. When I arrived home, I received a text from someone on my cell phone. The sender was my mother-in-law, Mira. Emily, are you at home now? Yes, I just got home from work. I see. I'm sorry. I thought you were at work. By the way, I'm sure you heard from Jackson. I hope you're getting a divorce soon. Yes, ma'am. And Jackson says he's going to pay you alimony. But you don't think you're going to get it, do you? What do you mean? I mean. That this whole thing started with your inability to have children in the first place. Remember, that means you are the cause of Jackson's affair. How can you say such a thing? It's the truth, isn't it? Besides, once you are married to someone, it's only natural that you want Jackson to be happy, isn't it? A child costs a lot of money. He doesn't have money to pay you. You know that, don't you? What about my happiness? I don't care. You shouldn't need that much money once you're single. And Jackson needs the money to raise his child. It's common sense. But my husband cheated on me. At the very least, 
he should pay me alimony. Money, money, money. You are so disgusting. Like I said before, you are the cause of the problem. I should be the one demanding you alimony. That makes no sense. I have told you from the beginning that I have difficulty having children. And top of that, Jackson married me, right? And then this betrayal. I don't know anything about that. Anyway, he's not going to pay alimony. That's all I'm saying. Bye. This outrageous text from my mother in law followed my husband's text earlier that day. My life was ruined. I somehow made it to work the next day, but I was feeling terrible. I had no life, and the people around me were very worried about me. However, I couldn't talk about this kind of thing to the people around me. I had no choice but to say, I'm a little sleep deprived. Then, as if to push me further, I received another text from Jackson. So, are you ready for the divorce? You should have had enough time by now. I've already come to the decision. It's just a matter of what you will do. But you just asked me yesterday. I can't grasp everything that quickly. There's nothing to be confused about. You just need to agree to the divorce without being stubborn. I'm going to start living at home with my lover now. I'm relieved to hear that she and my mother seem to be getting along well. I'm not saying that you didn't get along with my mom though. It's just an infertility thing was a bit of a problem. I see. You were moving in together. And, you know, about the other day, about the alimony. What? I talked to my mom about it, and she said it would be wrong for me to pay it. Yeah, your mom texted me and told me that. She said, of course I would get cheated on because I was infertile. If you say it like that, I sound like the bad guy. That's not what she meant. This is the best thing for the both of us. I'm also talking to a lawyer about our situation. A lawyer? Oh, but don't get me wrong. I'm not looking for a lawyer to come in between us. I'm just asking for legal advice. I see. About the alimony. How about offsetting it with the fact that we can't have kids? I think that's a pretty good compromise. What do you think? What do I think? We talked a lot about my inability to have children before we got married. We even talked about not getting married at all. But you said you were okay with that. So we got married, didn't we? Did I say that? I remember it was kind of vague and ambiguous. It was like, let's just think about it after we got married. What are you talking about? It's a matter of great importance to me. And you can't just decide on a simple matter like that. But you don't have any proof, do you? Then you don't know the truth, right? But I know it's hard with so much information. But please, come to a conclusion as soon as possible. You don't want to have to go to a lawyer, do you? If I don't get an answer by the end of the week, I'll file for a divorce on the grounds of marital breakdown. We're adults, so please cut me some slack. Bye now. I was speechless at how one-sided the argument was, but Jackson's text made me feel determined while I was in a mess and in shambles. I immediately consulted the lawyer. However, with only the testimony of Jackson and my mother-in-law, there was not enough evidence. It would be difficult to win a lawsuit in the current situation, and although it is not impossible to ask for alimony, it would take a long time. So it was not recommended for me to take action. I was at a loss for what to do. On my way home, I received a text from my mother-in-law on my cell phone again. Have you made your resolve yet? Resolve? What are you talking about? You know, about your divorce with Jackson. Why is it taking so long? I should be demanding alimony from you. Feel free to do that. 
Your son is the one who cheated on me. What are you talking about? You don't have proof of that. I have the testimony from you and Jackson. That's not enough evidence, I'm afraid. But I've checked with my lawyer, so I'm sure. It's impossible to prove him cheating on you with, with just our testimony. I'm not even going to ask for alimony. Oh, really? I don't want to end up like you guys. And to be honest, I don't even want to see your faces anymore. Oh, you were trying to act tough, huh? I allowed Jackson to marry you because he insisted. So, let's just say we paid you for letting you stay married to him. I'm done with this. I'll get a divorce and I will never speak to you again. Please don't contact me either. Fine, sounds good to me. Well, Emily, goodbye now. As much as I didn't agree, I didn't want to waste any more time. I decided to get a divorce in a snap. Jackson was surprised at my change of heart, but I guess he thought he would better do it before I changed my mind. He quickly signed the divorce papers and our marriage came to an end. Three years later, I remarried to a divorced man with a child. We were enjoying our life together and then I got pregnant. I had completely given up on the idea of having a baby. So my husband, who knew the situation, and I were overjoyed at the surprise. Then, on the way home from my first visit to an obstetrician other than for fertility treatment, I received a text message on my cell phone from a person I did not expect. Hey Emily, could it be Mira? Yes, it's me. Don't wear my name out. I heard that you got pregnant. Is that true? Where did you hear that? So, it's true then. I forgive you for everything that happened. So come back here. I'll adopt a baby if you insist. Excuse me? What are you saying? Why are you asking me to come back after three years? I don't understand. Jackson's second marriage was to an extraordinary woman. She gave birth to a son. When he got his blood type tested, it turned out to be type B. Ah, uh huh. Jackson and that woman are both type A. So there is no way they could have had a B type baby. When I asked her who she had an affair with, she just said she didn't have an affair with anyone. When I told her I didn't want a wife who would beg for alms, she and her baby left Jackson. What? Really? Really? Oh, I was in trouble. And then I heard that you had a baby. I mean, are you sure the father isn't Jackson? Of course not. The timeline definitely does not line up. Oh, really? Whoa, okay. Anyway, I thought that you, who works and can take care of the house, would be a much more suitable wife for Jackson. Huh, huh. <laughs> so, when can you come back? I've got a lot of preparation to do. You'll have to decide soon. There's a lot that I want to say. At any rate, when you are a newborn, it's hard to determine your blood type. Didn't you know that they often change blood types later in life? What? I don't know anything about that. Recently, there are more and more hospitals that don't test newborns for blood type. I was told at the hospital too, and I'm sure you can find out about it if you do a little research. It must have been really bad if you were nagging at Jackson's wife like you did with me. Well, it's none of my business, so feel free to do whatever you want. Don't say that, Emily. Let's meet and talk first. It'll be fun. No, thank you. I thought we were never supposed to contact each other again. That's, well, it's fine. We're family, right? No, we're not. I'm divorced from Jackson, and I am a stranger to you now. Have you forgotten? I haven't forgotten. 
But once we were a family. How can you be nice to someone you thought was your family, but then simply kicked out from the house? I don't care about you. So please don't contact me again. Wait, just talk to me. I won't be seeing you anymore. Goodbye. After that, several texts came in. I ignored all of them, and this time I even received an incoming call. I was thinking about consulting with a lawyer. I had asked last time because she was so persistent. Next, I received a text from Jackson. Sorry about my mother. She was having some thoughts, and went off on a tangent. Some thoughts, huh? It was a pretty bad outburst, and I'm still getting a lot of phone calls. What? Really? I'm thinking of getting a lawyer involved. I'm sorry. I'll get her to stop right away. My mother has been really troublesome. She would test the blood type on her own, and because it was different, she would make a big fuss about mendicancy. So what? You didn't say anything. I had my doubts too, but I didn't say anything. I see. My wife got stubborn and took the liberty of doing a DNA test on her own. When I asked her about the test results. She was furious that they proved paternity. I'm divorcing you, she said. She even demanded alimony. Isn't that terrible? Huh? <laughs> I see. Are you tired? You don't seem to be reacting much. I'm just not interested in what you have to say. Hey, hey! Don't say that. If you start talking like that now, you are going to have a hard time from now on. Okay? Like my mom said, you were going to come back here, right? Huh? When did it come to that? Because my mom said that you were wanting to come back. You're just being stubborn right now, and then I should give you a gentle welcome. That's disgusting. Are you seriously saying that? What? I remarried, and I am very happy with my life. My in-laws. Also treat me very well, and I love them. I don't want to get involved with you or your mother ever again. Do you understand? No, but if you don't come back, I'll be on my own. Emily, are you okay with that? I'm fine with it. Even if I demand alimony and you go broke, it doesn't matter. We were married once. You should help me out if you still have love for me. Your mother said something similar. You're the ones who broke off that relationship. But I will never see you again, and I'm blocking your number. Are you kidding me, Emily? Please, come back. This is the last time you'll hear from me. Goodbye. After that, I left everything in the hands of the lawyer. I asked for as quickly as possible. This is what the lawyer told me. Jackson and his wife ended up going to court, and after a while, they got divorced. Jackson's financial situation is very bad, due to paying alimony and child support, and the story seems to have gotten out to his company from somewhere. It seems that even within the company, rumors began to sneak around behind his back. In the same way, rumors about the divorce spread through his relatives. And now, his family does not associate themselves with him or Mira. But I don't really care about that. I am busy preparing for my baby. But hearing this was a good stress reliever.